Let's give Jesus a round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Are you one of them? Hallelujah. I'm proud to be called by the name of Jesus. I'm proud to be a Christian. I mean, he's proud to be a Christian. Hallelujah. I tell you what, it's an honor to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. As Brother Ronnie said, the Lord blessed us with another beautiful day, another chance, and another opportunity to come together with the saints and to worship him in his name, in spirit and truth. How many come to uplift the name of Jesus? I want to tell you, if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, tonight would be a good night to get saved. Tonight would be a good night to take all your cares and cast them on Him because He cares for you. How many knows that Jesus cares for you? I tell you what, let's just raise our hands towards heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for a few moments. Hallelujah. Welcome Him into the midst. Great God tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we are another round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody. Hallelujah. You can be seated just for a moment. I want to say again, it's a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord. 
We miss our pastors tonight, but I tell you what, I'm glad Jesus is here, and I'm glad we can have church. I'm glad that the saints are gathered together in his name, and I tell you what, the power of God's here to heal. It's here to save. It's here to set free and deliver. Whatever your need may be, you know Jesus wants to meet that need. Hallelujah. I tell you what, it's not about this or that, but it's all about the Lord. How many knows that tonight? Hallelujah. Like I said, great to be in the house of the Lord. I think David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So a thrill to be in the house tonight. Hallelujah. If the offering takers will make their way to the front, we'll get ready and take up tonight's mm -hmm. offering. Let's give Sister Carla a hand as she comes to sing tonight. Give her a hand tonight. Hallelujah. Brother Buddy, will you stand and testify tonight? Just an emblem of formality. It's a symbol that's been used so frequently. Many blaspheme, despise, though it's ancient.
God for the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Jason Akers, will you stand and testify tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Sister Katrina a hand. She sings tonight. Give her a hand. Well, I found the Lord one day, and I took him as my Savior. Cast my lot with the chosen few, and sought out for heaven. Well, soon I was to say, God, my friends have become my one.
like to be low. I know what it's like to feel good and I know what it's like to feel bad, but I don't know what it's like to feel a, a time without Jesus. I want to tell you something. When I find myself in trouble, I want to get on my knees and I want to have a little talk with Jesus. I want to have a little prayer with Jesus. I want to get a hold of the Lord because you know what? All at once, I start to feel a little comfort. All at once, I start to feel a little assurance. All at once, I start to realize there's relief for the stress I'm in. There's a little bit of relief. There, I want to tell you something. There's victory in Jesus tonight. He ain't ever done us nothing but good. I tell you, he ain't never done us nothing but good. Now, the government might be giving us all kinds of stimulus money. They may be giving you that, and they may be giving you this, but they can't give you peace. They can't give you salvation. They, uh, they can uh, get up in line, assure you all kinds of promises, but I want to tell you something. They can fail. I want to tell you, there's a lot of people that's told a lot of lies in a political sense, but I want to tell you something. Jesus has never failed in one of us. He's never come up short. I tell you what, his hand's not short, his arm's not short, and his ear's not heavy. That He can't hear us pray, and he can't meet us at, at an altar, and he can't restore us and bring us back. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? How many believes that Jesus ain't never done us nothing but good? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and said, he ain't never done me nothing but good. How many come to praise the Lord tonight? Did you come to worship him tonight? Did you come to lift him up? I tell you what, he ain't done you nothing but good tonight. Hallelujah. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. So good to be here. I tell you, it's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. I tell you, in today's culture, I'm not sure that we understand just how precious the word of God is. I'm not sure that we realize, you know, we, we have visitors come all the time and tell us what kind of gift and what kind of uh, blessing that God has bestowed upon us to have a church to come and to gather together in his name and to worship him. You know, we got a lot of freedom to worship Jesus. We do. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody tonight. Hallelujah. What a, what a good group of smiling faces tonight. Hallelujah. Brother Seth, stand and testify tonight.
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Rachel, stand and testify tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, we're getting ready to go into the Word tonight, but uh, before we change the service tonight, I heard that there's a couple of birthdays in the house tonight. Hallelujah. So, uh, so uh, Brother Randy, why don't you come on up front? We'll sing happy birthday to you. And Richard's birthday is today, too. So, y'all come on up front. We'll sing happy birthday real quick before we change the service. But uh, these gentlemen's birthday is today. So, so, all right, and Richard, uh, he's young enough, he gets a dollar, so you guys, uh, any of you want to bring him a dollar, uh, go ahead and do it. Sister Audrey, will you sing tonight to him? Richard, I think, is six years old today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you what, uh, I want to say, it's good, like I said before, I, I'm not senile, so I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's good to see everybody, good to see my family with me tonight, good to have my daughter in the house of the Lord, hallelujah, and my grandkids, hallelujah, my twins back there, uh, Tuck and Peyton, so uh, give them a hand. It's a blessing to have them in the house of the Lord with me tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, uh, Tuck and I was playing a little bit yesterday, and he come running around the side of the house, and Lynn's got a rose bush there, and that rose, the stem of that was sticking out where he was headed, and he run right into that. So if you look on his cheek, you're going to see some scratches on his cheek. That's where he run face first into the rose bush, but uh, I've enjoyed my time with them, that's for sure. Uh, God's blessed me, blessed me with a good family, got some aunts and uncles and a special cousin, Sister Marie, back there, so, and I'll tell you what, I've been blessed, and I got all you brothers and sisters in here, let's get, give yourself a hand, hallelujah, and, la and, you know, and last but not least, I want to give honor to my pastor, and his wife and, and, and the family and all the musicians and all they do because uh, the whole family, but, you know, especially Brother Keith, they've ministered into my life over the years, and I never, ever want to fail to be uh, respectful. And not only that, but I want to be sincere when I talk about it. I want everybody to understand that I am uh, grateful for the man of God that the Lord has placed in my life, okay? And I want to tell you something about the uh, church and what it means to me. And, you know, church is not just a place that I come for a social function or I come to ease my conscience. Church is a place I come to get fed the Word of God because I believe in this end time, Brother Ronnie, there's a direction. Brother Keith preached the other night about seducing spirits and, and to stay with the stuff. And, you know, I was thinking as, as you sung the song about... Um, and, and if you guys need to be seated, that's fine. I'm not going to sing anymore. But And you guys sung the song about Job and, uh, and how his wife came to him, and she said, Job, curse God and die. And, you know, what, what she was saying is Job uh, 
you, you, you turn, you, you, she's asking him to turn her, his back on God. She's asking him to, to, to give up and to stop. And I want to tell you something, you know, there, in this day and time, there's been a lot, there, in the last year, and, and, I, and I've said it before, I've never really seen uh, this coming with the whole COVID deal and all that goes with it. Uh, but it's, been, but it's, it's attacked the church in, in some ways. And I'm not, and I'm not, and, 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 it's, and it's caused a political divide even deeper than it was before. But the thing about it is, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? And the Bible says in another place that uh, how good and how pleasant is it for d- brethren to dwell together in unity. And I want to tell you something. If nothing else, the devil's took advantage of the situation, and he's caused a lot of split and a lot of division over whether we should or whether we shouldn't, okay? You see what I'm saying? Whether we should do this or whether we shouldn't do that. He's caused a lot. He's caused a major split and division. And, and I want to tell you something. He split the electric so because uh, we were very successful economically prior to, to COVID, and he split the electorate in such a, the, 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 the voters in such a way that, that and I, I want to tell you who I think benefit, I think the enemy benefited from that big time. Now, and I'm not preaching politics, but I want to tell you the best I can hear from anybody, China is not our friend. And, and, and I want to tell you something. If anybody ever came out on top in this last election, I believe getting Trump out of office benefited China more than anybody. And, and like I said, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. That's not what I'm talking about. Because to tell you the truth, they're both bankrupting the, the nation. It's just different ways they're spending their money, I guess. But, and it's not even about that. What I'm talking about is the unity, okay? And, and, and not only that, but like I said, it's caused people not to want to go to church. It's caused people not to, and the, the scary thing about it, and I told you, church is a place for you to get fed. Church is a place, see, church is important in our lives. We don't realize, we don't realize what the man of God, with the word of God, with the direction for your life, with a with the decision you're going to make tomorrow that you don't know about today, you don't know how important that is. And I want to tell you something, you know, and and I'm going to preach a few things tonight that God laid on my heart. But I want to tell you something. When you talk about seducing spirits, and I listened to Brother Keith preach the other night, and he said the seducing spirits will cause disloyalty. And I want to tell you something. Job's wife, as the song said, said curse God and die. In other words, Job, you don't have to be loyal to God anymore. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and there's, a, there's a spirit in the land that says, and, I, and it's attacked the churches. I mean, what in the world else would get somebody that's went to church all their lives, you know, 20, 30, 40 years? What in the world else would have got those people to quit? It was almost like a Sunday morning ceremony or, or, or a routine that they were in, and all at once they, they enter this uh, time period, and then now they don't want to go back to the house of the Lord. And I want to tell you something. It's caused them to be disloyal, and it's caused them to undervalue the Word of God. But I want, I want to tell you something. I want to ask you, you know, the first part of that song says, I cast my lots with the chosen few, and I headed out for heaven. How many wants to go to heaven tonight? How, how many wants to go to heaven tonight? I tell you what, I want to go to heaven. When my life is over, I want to make sure my home is in heaven. And I want to make sure that when I close these eyes for the last time, I open them, I see Jesus. Okay? That's what I want to do. I'm living for Jesus. I'm living for that. I put all my eggs in that basket. I've said that before. There's no plan B. There's no, I, I, I was teaching Sunday school Sunday, and I told the kids, I said, now you can't have it both ways. You can't straddle the fence, okay? Either Jesus is God or somebody else is God, but you can't have it both ways. Muhammad ain't got no power. Now, if he does, Jesus is false. You got to pick. You can't have it both ways. Now, there's a, there's a compromising spirit in the land that wants, to, that wants us to believe a lie, but you can't have it both ways. And I want to tell you something. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other name given unto man that we might be saved other than by the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you something. There is a salvation plan tonight. There is a plan for your life, but most people are not very goal-oriented, okay? And when I talk to you just a moment about being goal-oriented, most people, and I, I want you to hear what I'm saying just for a moment. Most people will say things like this. Well, any place is better besides where I'm at right now. I said, who told you that? 
Who, who told you that? I mean, just because you're aggravated and you're disgusted with the circumstances you're in does not mean that any place is better than where you're at right now. I, I want to tell you, most people are not goal-oriented. They want to continue to do the same things, and they want God to bless them doing the same things. You see what I'm saying? But God's got a plan to bless you. He's got a plan to prosper you. He's got a plan to uplift you and to bring you to, in, in, into that victory, into that promised land. He's got a plan for you. But you can't do it your way. And you can't, I can't do it my way. God's got a way for us to do it, okay? And I want to hear what God's got to say. But you know what he's doing in this day and time? He's trying to get us to sit at home because, because there's a division. You see what I'm saying? We don't know whether we should or where we shouldn't. There, there's a division that came with all that mess. And there's an there's a attack on the church that came with all that mess. But I want to tell you something. I believe with all of my heart that we're in the end of the end. We're in the last of the last of the days, okay? And if that's true tonight, if that's true tonight, you need direction straight from behind the pulpit more than you did two years ago. If that's true, I, if the bridegroom is nigh and he's about to make the call, you need direction more tonight. You need more in your bottle. You need more in your lamp. You need more oil in your lamp than you've ever needed. You see what I'm saying? And I want to tell you something. Now's not a good time to sit at home. Now's not a good time to get cold on God. Today is not a day to quit. I believe that with all my heart. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. But I want to tell you something about the seducing spirits causing disloyalty. And I said this in a testimony not too long ago when I was testifying. But you know God has been with me. And I, and I could take you down through uh, different chapters of my life. And, I, I, you know, I, I hear Brother Jason talk about making a choice to serve the Lord, okay? And, and he can talk about the chapters of his life, too, how God was there for him. And I know you've got chapters in your life that you can talk about. But I want to tell you something. God never left me nor forsaken me. He never left me defeated. He never left me beaten down. He never left me stranded. He never left me uh, in a bad place. Instead, he picked me up. He set my feet on the rock. He helped me. He established me. And not only that, but he gave me a place where I could come and I could be taught the Word of God in an effort to I could improve my life. You see what I'm saying? Most people don't understand the Word of God. Most people don't understand what it means to be a good husband. Most people don't understand what it means to be a good wife. I, I want to tell you something. I'll be truthful with you. As a young man, I first got married, I thought it would come natural. Boy, was I mistaken. I, I want to tell you something. Most men, including myself, I had a son at 21 years old. I didn't know how to be a father. See, I want to tell you something. I had to learn. I had to research. I had to see things work, and I failed at a lot of things. But I want to tell you something. I didn't give up. I wanted to be a good father. Unfortunately for Josh, and to Ben's benefit, he, Ben's got a better dad today than Josh had when he was that age. But I want to tell you something. I had to learn. And you have to learn tonight. But God's got a plan. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He's got thoughts of peace for you and not of harm. He's got, he's, got, he's got joy prepared for you. But I want to tell you something where we mess up at. And, and we're, you know, in America especially, there's no loyalty anymore. I think loyalty used to be when a handshake and all that kind of stuff back in the generation before mine even. And you had the small stores on the square and all that. But, you know, all that's kind of went to the wayside. And now everybody shops wherever they can save the most. Or, and I want to tell you something, the corporate America is all about making money, okay? So it's not about what you're saving there. They're figuring out how to get you somehow while you're in there, okay? So you might be saving on the item on, on one item, but they're, they're figuring out how to make their money on you. they got a margin or a percent that they want to make, and they're going to figure out how to make that percent, okay? So you could almost say they're almost like they're preying on you. Okay? Now, I'll tell you something else. I'll go a little deeper. These companies that's charging so much for different items right now, it's not because there's a shortage of supply. It's not. It's because there's a lot of stimulus money, a lot of extra benefits and so on out there, and they might as well make their margin because there's a demand on it. And I want to tell you something. So they're praying on you. They're, they're, they're praying on you. And I want to tell you that corporate America and all that kind of stuff is out to make money. But I want to tell you, Jesus come that we could have life and we could have it more abundantly. And I want to tell you, there's a way you got to do it. And, and, 
and, and, and Jesus lays it out in the Bible in several different places. But, you know, I come to preach to you tonight. Do you have the ability to listen? The Bible says, he that have an ear, let him hear. So I want to ask you, do you have the ability to listen tonight? Do you have the ability to follow instructions? You know, I hear people make excuses all the time. And, and it's not just uh, spiritual excuses. Some of them are natural excuses. Somebody say, well, it don't matter what I do. It ain't never going to be good enough. Well, what are you saying when you say that? If you break that down, what are you saying? If it's a job or a goal that somebody's got set for you, what are you saying when you say, no matter what I do, it's never going to be good enough? In other words, you're saying I want to stay exactly where I'm at, and I want everybody else to suddenly be okay with it. I want everybody else to come in and say, Good job. Even though I didn't meet my goal, good job. You see what I'm saying? Now, in a spiritual sense, we want to live the same way we've always done. We want to get up, go about our daily routine. We want to come in, if, if we, you know, depending on if you're the husband or the wife, it gets us different routines there. But we want to get home, and we want to do the same thing, and then we want our spouse to be happy about it. Now, that's okay if you're doing good, but if there's a problem there, you got to figure out how where the remedy is, okay? So, in the house of God, we want to do the same things and, and expect a better result. But I want to tell you something. He said he, he, gave a re, he gave a recipe, if that's what you want to call it, or a formula for repentance. And he said in Second Chronicles, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Now, how many humble people do you know today? <laughs> how many humble Christians do you know today? Now, I'm going to get in the Word, so if you bear with me just a minute, I'm going to get in the Word. But he gave us a recipe. And I want to tell you something. You're never going to get the rest of it if you don't get the humble. you got to start out with the humble, okay? But if you'll stand, stand with me for the reading of God's Word, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 1. In verse 19, and I want to tell you this, a little history on this, but bro, bro, uh, as a young teenager, I, a young man even prior to being a teenager, I would come to church occasionally and uh, felt the power, power of God touch me in, in, in several times, but we never came as regular as we should have. And then there come a time that I didn't come at all because I was of age and could do what I wanted to. But in July or August of 1997, we came to a tent revival and we got saved, okay, me and my wife. And we got saved and we started to come to church more often, but we wasn't very regular or every service regular at the time. And God uh, began to minister to me in particular with a lot of messages. And one of the first scriptures that really was ministered to me, and, and I was called out, and I was told this scripture, if you're willing and obedient. Now, I've never forgot that, okay? And the reason why is, now listen to this, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah. Brother Jason Popperwell, will you say the prayer of the word tonight? Hey Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And if, you, and if you refuse and you rebel, you'll be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, I want to tell you something. If I get a commandment or I get a direction from Jesus, it's not up to me to question that. It's not up to me to decide what to do and what not to do with that. But it's up to me to be willing and it's up to me to be obedient. Now, I want to tell you something. I told you he had a promise for you. He had a good life prepared for you. He had a lot of good things prepared for you. You can have a good marriage. You can have a good, you can raise good kids and you can 
and raise children that love the Lord. You can do these things. But I want to tell you something. You need to be willing and you need to be obedient. You need to humble yourselves and listen to what the man of God's got to say. I want to tell you something. There's a value in the Word of God these days. There's a value in the Word of God that we get to come in here and hear it three times a week at least that we don't consider or we may maybe we take it for granted at times. But I want to tell you something. It's hard to be willing and obedient to something that you don't have time to come and listen to. You see what I'm saying? But when I get a direction from the Lord, I and, and, and trust me, I've had to humble myself. I've had to do things I didn't want to do before, but I thought it was right or I was directed. And you know what? It always come out to the good, Brother Ronnie. It, I always got a blessing out of it. You see what I'm saying? I never, ever obeyed the Lord and didn't get to eat the good of the land. So I come to tell you tonight that you, if you'll obey God, God will bless you. If you'll be willing, God will bless you. God will use you. But you, but it's like Brother Jason said, it's a choice. You can refuse, and you can rebel, and you can make excuses. But there's no reason. I want to tell you something. He's not a respecter of persons. He'll bless you just like he'll bless me. He'll bless me just like he will Brother Keith. He'll save me just like he does whoever else, whoever, you know, whatever saint you can think of. He'll save me with the same blood. He loves us all. But, you know, stay with the stuff. You know, when we get aggravated or, or uncomfortable, sometimes we want to jump ship. And sometimes things that cause divide will cause us to jump ship. But God's a God of direction. He'll provide leadership for his people. He'll provide leadership for his flock and for his church and for his bride. You know, it seems like people in, in, our, in our culture today have become overwhelmingly self-centered. They're, they're very opinionated and lack understanding. Now, I can give you a couple of natural examples of that. And one of them is uh, the restaurant industry laid off all of its workers, or most of them, during all this uh, shutdown. And as they open back up, they've had a lot of trouble staffing their restaurants. So you got people that go in restaurants that are supposed to be Christians that are very, very impatient. And you know what? I don't know if it, it, I don't know how I don't know how compassionate it is for them to complain. I'm just telling you the truth, in a way that maybe could be considered ungodly. And I, I, I just want to say that, you know, and, and I'm not knocking anything. They're very opinionated. They got, they got an opinion of how things should be. Uh, you know, there's very little consideration, and compassion is rarely on exhibit. Most of the time, all you get is uh, aggression. All you get is anger. All you get is, uh, is, is somebody that is impatient to hurry up and get home and watch TV or something that don't mount to nothing. Have you ever been driving down the road and you're in a hurry and you're running late somewhere and somebody pulls out in front of you and there ain't no cars behind you? They go ahead and they pull out in front of you and then they're running 25 mile an hour and the speed limit's 55 and I'm in a hurry. And I'm thinking, why in the world... Then they just wait till I pass by. There's nobody behind me. You see what I'm saying? But it causes you to be very impatient. But if I'm sitting at a restaurant and all I'm going to do is go home and watch Andy Griffith, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a good reason for me to show out because somebody takes an extra 10 or 15 minutes. And when I say show out, I'm talking about, you know, showing out. Yeah. And it seems like people are, are very self-centered, very opinionated, and that, and that carries over to the church. You know what? They, they got their own ideas of how to do things. And I, I want to tell you, and, I, 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 and I'm going to give you a couple examples, okay? Let's talk about it in the Bible. Jo, uh, the, the children of Israel came out of Egypt, and you know the whole story, so I'm not going to repeat it to you. But they, but, but they were stiff-necked, and, they, and, they, and they, didn't, they had a promise, and they didn't claim it, okay? At the end of the day, they, 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 they uh, were stiff-necked against God, and they got deprived of making it to the promised land. And then Joshua comes along, or Joshua was part of that, but the, 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 the generation after that, when they got old enough and the time had fully passed, it was time to go over Jordan, okay? And they get over Jordan, and they start taking over cities and things. 
The first, and one of the first cities they come to is the city of Jericho. And the Bible says it was straightly shut up. Now, I'm sure that most of you know a little bit about war. Some of you more than others. But for you not to do anything except what they were told to do doesn't sound like a very smart plan to conquer a city with those fortified walls. You see what I'm saying? But God had a specific direction for jo for Joshua to follow. And he said, you do this on day one. And then you do this on day two. And then you do this on day three. And then you do this on day four. And then you do this on day five. And then you do this on day six, which was the same. They had to do the same thing. And then on the seventh day, you do this. Okay? And, and, and he very specifically told Joshua how to win that battle. Now, I want to tell you something. God has victory in your life, and he has a very specific plan for you to accomplish that victory. I want to tell you, Jer uh, Jer Jericho was straightly shut up. They had prepared, the Bible says, I think in 6 and 1, that they were straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. They were preparing for the children of Israel. They knew they had trouble with the children of Israel. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible says that they were straightly shut up. And anyway, the point is, God had a, a, a victory for them in a, in, a, in a possible situation. I want to tell you something. You may be facing something that is fortified. You may be facing something that is established. You may be facing something that is, it seems to be impossible. But if you'll listen to Jesus, if you'll humble yourself and listen to what God has got to say to you, if you'll humble yourself and seek him, how many knows he will direct your path? He will bring you into victory. And those walls of Jericho in your life will start to crumble down. But I want to tell you something. I can't do it my way, brother buddy. I can't, I can't march my way. Jesus said there's a way that you march. God said there's a way that you do this thing. I got victory prepared for you, but you're going to do it my way. And I want to tell you something. You know what we do sometimes? We don't listen. We don't heed the word of God. You say, we're, we, you got an example of that? Absolutely. I think there, uh, there, there was a, a man named Saul. He was king in the Bible. And you know what? Samuel come to him and he said, you kill everybody of the Amalekites. He said, you kill the king. You kill every man, woman, and child. And you kill every animal that they have. Okay? That's what he said. And God was, or Samuel was very specific in what he said. You see what I'm saying? But, but Saul thought he had a better way of doing things. I want to tell you something. When you're marching around the city and the wall is still standing high, it's not a time to let your mind wander. It's not a time to think, is this doing any good? I want to tell you something. When you come to the house of God, yes, it's doing good. Yes, it's doing good. Yes, it's doing good. For one thing, it's planting you. It's establishing you. It's preparing you. So don't, don't, let, don't let some devil talk to you. Who said you're better off somewhere else? Who said anything is better than this? I tell you what, I'm sitting here looking at that wall, and it seems mighty high. It seems mighty fortified. But who told me that I couldn't take it? Who told me I couldn't take it? But who told me I could take it? Who told me it would crumble if I would just listen, if I would just be willing, and I would just be obedient? Who told me I could eat the good of the land? Who told me that? His name is Jesus. I want to tell you something tonight. Do you know how valuable you got it? Do you know how precious you got the Word of God is precious in this day and time. I want to tell you something. If you got a heart to go to church, if you got a fire to go to church, if you got a desire to support and to uplift and to be there, you know what? You better thank God because it's very rare today. Men of God come into this church and say, you're blessed. They come in here and, and, and well, I mean, either you believe it or you don't. And I just happen to believe them. Hallelujah. I ain't out here looking around at everybody else, but I do know what I got, and God's blessed me. But I want to tell you something. Saul didn't do it. Saul, Saul said, I kept the best, and I made a deal with, Amalek, uh, with Amalek. I did these things, and he was kind of proud of it. Now, why would you stand face-to-face -face with a man of God do right the opposite of what he said do, and then be proud of it. That's what he did. Now, are you? am I any better than Saul? Are you?
Are you any better than Saul? How many knows we need to humble ourselves? Turn from our wicked ways. Self-centered. Self-centered. God has blessed me. He's gave me. He's gave me. He's gave me. He's gave me. And I want to tell you something. I want to be loyal to him. He's blessed me for 24 years. I've been living for him, I guess, now since 1997. He's blessed me. He's brought me through things. He's healed me. He's touched me. He's repaired the damage I've done in certain areas of my life. Why would I be disloyal to him now? Why would I not come to church? And why would I not tell somebody how good God is? Why? I want the ability to listen. I want the ability to follow. And everybody has the ability to follow. God is a God of direction. He'll provide leadership for his people. Okay. Joshua, another example. Joshua fighting the battle there at Jericho. The walls fell down. It was a great victory. Goes to the next battle, which is Ai, and they got disobedience in the camp. They got somebody who didn't listen, brother buddy, in the camp. God's victorious people, for some reason, got greedy, whatever. And they went, and they, and I think his name was Akin, and he took some stuff that wasn't his, and he hid, hid it, and it belonged to God. And he hid it in his tent. And when the children of Israel went out there to fight Ai, now they didn't march around the city. You see what I'm saying? Totally different strategy. They send out a few less people, or send out several less people, and they basically get destroyed. They basically get what we in Kentucky call a whooping. They laid a whooping on them, and they defeated them. And they shouldn't have been able to do anything. You see what I'm saying? Because God's people are blessed. But I want to tell you something. They didn't do it God's way. Now, now you follow what I'm saying. Now, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Now, I, I got a few more examples I want to talk to you about tonight. But I, but I just want you to think, you know, and um, if I could say a thought or, 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 or uh, a statement that would cause you to think and realize, you know, you're undefeatable, just like Joshua. There's no, there's no mountain that can't be climbed. There's no valley that can't be crossed. There's no problem that can't be solved. But if, if Satan can talk you into being disloyal, or go in a different direction, then you're defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. I got one more example, and then we're going we're gonna to get ready and close and give an altar call. But, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, tonight would be a good night. Acts 27 and most of you know the story well. But they, uh, they were determined that they were going to sail to Italy. They delivered Paul and certain prisoners under one named Julius, a centurion of Angus or Augustus' band. And in, entering into the ship, we launch, and it tells about where they sailed and all that, and they had sailed, verse 7 says, they had sailed slowly for many days, and there was one that came over against, and why not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salaam, and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the, the, haven, the Fair Havens, nigh unto where the city of Lycia. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because of the fast was already passed, Paul admonished them, or he warned them. He said, Sirs, I perceive this voyage will be with hurt and much danger, not only of the lighting, lighting of the ship, but also of our lives. But listen to this. Now, the, centen the centurion heard the man of God, give him a direction, okay? Nevertheless, 
the satyrian believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, and the part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they may obtain uh, Phineas and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, lie toward the southwest and the northwest. Now, I know I've brought this message out, and I've tried to explain it as much as I can. I wanted, I wanted you to hear what God has placed in my spirit. But, I, but it really concerns me to see empty seats in church. It really concerns me to see people not go to church anymore because I know how valuable church is to me in my life. I know how valuable Brother Seth's church has been to my success. God has made me room for me. He's blessed me. You know, sometimes I'll tell somebody, I'm, and, and I want you to understand what I'm saying, but I'll tell somebody, because I'm bragging on the Lord, but I'll tell somebody I'm a high school dropout, and they'll just look at me. And I'll say, I went back and got my GED, but I'm a high school dropout. I made some very bad decisions in my life. Some I regret, but you know what? God blessed me anyway. He made a way for me. He pulled me up out of the gutter. There was there was a time that you you know you know and, I, and I, as I look back and I reminisce, there was a time that a lot of people didn't have a lot of hope in me. You know, if I could say it like this, the 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 hand I was dealt was stacked against me. But I want to tell you something. All that changed at an altar. All that changed when I went to an altar and I said, Jesus, will you be Lord of my life? God, would you help me? And all at once, I started having direction. You see, those rocks that we sing about in the Lighthouse song, those rocks were there. And they were meant to destroy me. But you know what? All at once, Jesus showed the light that I could safely sail through them and I could safely navigate my life around in a way that I could be blessed. You see what I'm saying? Somehow, some way, God allowed me to hear, hear the call and to heed the call of salvation. You see what I'm saying? He blessed me. He restored me. He gave me a life. And I want to tell you something. It bothers me that I can't get everybody to see, that I can't get everybody to understand that we need Jesus. We need the direction of God. We need need church more in 2021 than we did in 2019. We need church more today. I want to tell you something. I'm looking forward to the revival, okay? I'm making plans to be here during the revival. I want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has got to say to me. I want a direction from my life. You see what I'm saying? I, You know what? I'm not finished here. I got more things to do for the Lord, and I got higher places to reach in the Lord, but you know what? I'm not going to get there my way. I'm not going to get there doing things uh, my way. I'm going to get there if I humble myself and, I, and, I, and I'm willing and I'm obedient. Then I'll get there. But I'll tell you what they did. They didn't listen to Paul. You know, I can tell you about some other people, you know, and including myself, I guess. Sometimes we didn't listen. And, man, it got ugly. It got ugly when we didn't listen. I told, uh, I told somebody here, here just a few days ago, been married to my beautiful wife in March, 24 years, and wasn't the what you know wasn't the best young man ever was, wasn't high on anybody's list. But when it come time for she and I to get married, I walked up to that father and that mother that I don't know how they felt about me at that time. But I walked up to them and I said, I want to marry your daughter. Will you bless it? And they said, yes. Now, you can laugh that off. You can do whatever you want to do. But I believe that our marriage has been blessed because I asked for that blessing. And then her father walked her down the aisle and gave her to me. And I believe that's a blessing. And like I said, I believe, that, I believe that's the way it should have been. You see what I'm saying? I, and, and, you know, there's a lot of problems and things that have happened and all that kind of stuff. But I want to tell you something. God's seen us through it all. And 24 years later, we wasn't supposed to be able to have any kids. We wasn't supposed to be able to do this or that. But you know what? Here we are with four kids, four grandkids. And you know what? God has blessed us. Leanne's supposed to be in a wheelchair by the time she was 30. And she's uh, still taking care. She's uh, well past 30. And she's still taking care of everything, just like any, just like any normal two-legged 
lady would do. And I want to tell you something. She's been good to me, and I love her, and God has blessed us. But I believe that there's a right way to do things, folks. I believe it's an honorable way to do things. And I'm not knocking anybody that didn't, okay? I'm just telling you what God's done for me. And I, and, and I want to tell you something. They found themselves in the storm. And, they, and the thing about the storm, the storm was they, they, couldn't see, they couldn't see the moon or stars. They had no direction. Listen to me just for a moment as I close. They had no direction. They were out there on the ocean, and they couldn't tell where they were. They couldn't decide which way to go. They, 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 they didn't know what to do, and they feared for their lives. I want to tell you something. Paul, he, he goes for our absence in verse 21. He says, but after a long absence, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Sirs, should you have hearkened unto me? You should have hearkened unto me and not loosened from Crete. In other words, he's saying, I told you so. And to have gained his harm and loss, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must go before and before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that, sh that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told. Howbeit we must cast upon a certain island, but, but the fourteenth night was come, and we were driven up about midnight to sh shipmen deemed that they drew near the some, some country. I want to get on and skip on down a few verses here. Uh, they were afraid they were going to hit the rocks, basically, and the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, verse 30. When they had let down the boats into the sea under the color, as though they had cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said unto the centurion, the same satyrian that didn't listen to Paul. Paul is speaking to him in verse 31, and he says, unto the, he says to the satyrian and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. The soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall. And the day was coming, and Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, this day is the 14th day ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray unto you, Take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not be a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and when they had broken it, he, he began to eat. They were all of good cheer and took some meat. Now, I want to tell you something, and then it goes on to tell you how many people's in the boat and everything. I want to tell you something. In the, in the storm, God gave direction. There was, no, there was no moon or stars. There was no way for them to navigate it themselves, okay? But God spoke to the man of God that was in their lives and gave them people direction. Now, I want to tell you, the centurion, now I'm closing. I'm closing. If they want to come back to the music tonight, I'm closing. The centurion didn't listen to Paul in the first part of that chapter. But I want to tell you, the centurion all at once had a lot of respect for what Paul had to say. See what I'm saying? And I want to tell you something. It's never too late to start listening. You may be in a storm tonight, but it's never too late to start listening. It's never too late to repent. You see what I'm saying? It's never too late to turn from your wicked ways. It's never too late to ask the Lord to help you be willing and obedient. It's never too late. How many knows what I'm saying? Will you stand to, to your feet tonight? I'll tell you what. I've delivered my heart to you tonight. I want to tell you, it's never too late to change direction. It's never too late. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to accept the, uh, the, the, the direction that our life is headed. We can accept the direction that the Lord has. We need to accept the leadership from the people, man or woman, pastors, that God has placed in our lives. I want, to, I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. I, I want to give an altar call. You know, it's all about Jesus tonight. I was, I was telling the kids in, in Sunday school, you know, there's a lot of things that comes in people's lives.
But I can promise you there's going to be a storm someday. Every day is not going to be sunny. There's going to be a tragedy someday. You know that? You know, one day Hezekiah was in his palace. And Isaiah, the man of God, the prophet, came in and he said, Set your house in order, you're going to die. Your sickness is unto death, you're going to die. And you know what Hezekiah did? He humbled himself. And he prayed. He turned, he turned towards the wall and he prayed. And he cried out to God. I want to tell you something. You have that opportunity tonight. You know, you have an opportunity to reach out to the Lord. And you know what God did? God spared Hezekiah, gave him 15 more years. You know, that's the kind of mercy that you, that, that you have tonight from Jesus. The Bible says that men ought to give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Like I said, this altar is open as they sing tonight. Would you like to give your heart to Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. Would you like to make him Lord of your life? Anybody need anything from Jesus, please make your way to the front. We'll pray for you tonight. Hallelujah. here to minister to your needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's give Jesus a round of praise tonight. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glad to see each of you out in the house of the Lord tonight. I encourage you to remember the revival. Make plans to be here. How many will do that? Amen. Amen. How many knows God's got a direction for your life? Hallelujah. I encourage you to let your pastor, his wife, know how much you missed them. You know, I always miss the pastor. Appreciate all the compliments. 